Hello and welcome to another edition of PCAM Lab Screencast. I'm Professor Jeff Yarger and we're going to say a few minutes about how to estimate the uh, hydrodynamic radius, they're often called the Stokes radius. And so uh, I pulled this up on Wikipedia um, and uh, Basically, you can see that the hydrodynamic radius that's used in the Stokes-Einstein equation, or often called the Stokes radius, is the radius of, uh, of a hard sphere that would diffuse at the same rate as the molecule of interest. And in this case, we're going to look at uh, chloroform as an example and how I typically um, estimate it. The other thing that's nice to know is, is that chlorine typically has... Um, okay right here, a covalent radius of about 1 angstrom or about 1.75 angstrom uh, van der Waal radius, but it, uh, in this case our chlorines are uh, covalently bound. So I just looked both of those up on Wikipedia. The other thing I want to point you to is an article I just put on, um, if you're in Chemistry 343, I uh, just added um, an article right here. Uh, for the Stokes-Einstein uh, of a paper I'm going to show you here at the end. Okay, so with that in mind, the way I typically estimate the Stokes radius of any molecule is using Gaussian. And so I use Gauss View 5 that's linked to Gaussian uh, 09. Uh, quickly draw uh, a chloroform molecule. This is carbon tetrachloride. Uh, put that there, um, or, or, or carbon tetrahedral. So this is methane. Uh, I'm going to Add chlorines to a fragment to three of the sides. So now that is uh, chloroform, right? And I can even view that in a display mode that kind of shows it on uh, realistic, you know, uh, sizes using the van der Waals radius. So you can see the chlorines are much bigger than the proton. And so really it's how fast, if this thing is molecularly tumbling like this, and it doesn't drag any water molecules or other chloroforms with it, what kind of general radius does that right there map out? Well, um, you can imagine like about the biggest it can map out is, um, is if you spun this around, like what kind of radius is that taking up? Well, the first approximation, you know, we could get a couple distances here. And so, you know, that to, the, that, to that distance, you know, is about 2.8 angstroms. But obviously, it's going to be a little longer than that. The most it can be is if this is at 180 degrees. So I'm going to quickly just make this at 180 degrees see what that distance is and you can optimize this etc I'm just showing you real quickly and now that distance is up to well, that distance is 1.7 but the distance from chlorine to chlorine is 3.5 um, and then that's to the center of both of those and that we know that radius is an extra one on either side so four or five so about 5.5 we'll just call it you know close to six uh, if once you do an optimization is is from end to end what it's going to end up so from center of chlorine to center of chlorine 180 degrees that would be 3.5 angstroms um, uh, but we really want what the overall so we want to the end of this which is adding another angstrom here and another angstrom there so that's up to 5.5 angstrom total diameter so we're we'll just call it an even six angstroms so that's back to a three angstrom hydrodynamic radius so that gives you a, you know a simple way where you can use Gaussian to draw molecules you can even go in here and optimize those molecules so you can go to calculate set up uh, an optimization job to make sure you're getting the right distances, but Gaussian does pretty good just in drawing them to accurate distances and then using the fact that we know um, the chlorine um, you know, covalent radius adds another 102 picometers or one angstrom. So that's the radius on either side that it adds. And we're going to have to uh, need two of them, one for, you know, this side and one for that side. So that's going to bring it up to 5.5 or round it up to six, right? And a pa this paper I just put on the web, uh, figure five here shows that chloroform is right around uh, 0.3 nanometers or three angstrom radius, which would be a, a six angstrom diameter. 
So hopefully this helps get you started on a simple way to estimate hydrodynamic or Stokes radius. Thank you.